Lads, before we do jump into this Manchester United match review, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Noticing a lot more new viewers at the channel, and not a lot of them are subscribing. So if you are a new viewer, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like the video as well, it really does help and support the channel. And make sure you also click the bell so you're notified when they upload. So enjoy today's Manchester United match review. Well, lads, what's the crack? And welcome back to another new video in KTFG. And today we're doing a Manchester United match review. As our first game of the Premier League season has just ended, and it has ended in the face against Brighton. We've lost 2-1 at home to Brighton, and to be honest, I am sick in my mouth. I cannot believe that we've lost the first game of the season, the first game of the Ten Hag era to Brighton at home. First game of the season, I just cannot believe it. I just cannot believe it. Like uh, These players in pre-season, for most of the part at least, actually looked like they were playing actually decent. They looked like... Finally, when the first day, uh, when the first match of the season would roll around, that uh, we would finally start playing good and start to pick up a bit of momentum. Even uh, any new manager who comes in always has a bit of momentum at the start of his managerial career at the club. Uh, maybe he mightn't, uh, he may maybe he mightn't succeed at the club, but every manager will definitely have a good few results in his first few matches. But here we've lost to Brighton, and this is a Brighton team. Let's not forget about the Cucurella. Without Basuma, they've just lost their two best players and we've still lost them. They've still played us off the park. There's been a, few, a lot of them players on that pitch were really bad in this one. I'll, I'll name a few of them here. Marcus Rashford, first half he was anonymous, invisible. I didn't see him at all. Then in the second half, when he did appear, he was useless. I mean, he missed about two, he missed a sitter, one-on-one -on -one sitter, right in front of the goal. He just needs to put it past Robert Sanchez and Nets. And what does he do? He, he manages to let Sanchez save it. That is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Then he goes for a volley and he hits it. He hits it above Rosetti. He hits it in the Rosette's head. He probably hits it out of the bloody stadium. He, Rashford was awful in that game. And to be honest, I thought Rashford would start this season in good form. But apparently, no. Apparently, he's been pretty bad. And well, here is ready to prove. I am starting to lose all hope in Rashford because I tell you what, he's had too many chances in my opinion. He needs to prove himself very quickly or else, in my opinion, he should be gone. And um, McFred, once again, why are we starting McFred still in midfield? McCominay and Fred, this is meant to be the new Ten Hag era and we're still starting them two in midfield. Scott McCominay, in my opinion, was the worst of the two. Um, very bad. I mean, he just lost the ball every single time I saw him with it. I'm pretty sure he was the main lead to the first or second goal. He's definitely the main lead. Um, main cause to one of the goals definitely I think it was the second goal actually he lost the ball in midfield you know very clumsy he could have got sent off in the first half as well he was very bad and Fred on the other side well Fred just did everything wrong in that game again just like McCominay misplacing passes he is playing as a 6 he's not a CDM he is not a 6 and that's where De Jong needs to come in we are meant to have De Jong in that midfield today but no we have McCominay and Fred still I mean it's about what 3 maybe 4 years now with them to him at field, and well, every single game, they do not play well. I do not understand why these two keep on getting picked. You've got Donny van de Beek in the bench, you've got James Garner in the bench. They, them two should not be starting against Brentford next week, and well, I want to see uh, Donny van de Beek and James Garner. Players like that starting, because I'm pretty sure they'd do a better job in that team. Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire, you cannot play with a high line with Maguire, because simply, he is too slow. I know Varane has had a few niggles, niggles here and there. He's had a few injuries, uh, but still, I, I, I think I'd rather put him in there. Maybe he's smart enough to maybe start Maguire, but definitely at half time, Maguire should be coming off and Varane should be coming on. That's a bad decision there by Ten Hag. Very bad there. I mean, Maguire just too slow. Varane is actually fast, and well, he'd be a good partner with Martinez. Maguire on the other side is not helping Martinez out at all. He's not helping him out at all. Like. That's all I really have to say about him. Diogo Dalo was awful in that game too. You know, he let uh, the Brighton player make him and that led to their first goal. So he was a main cause and a main lead to the first goal. So there is a bad thing. And the second goal too, it was his man who scored and Dalo was nowhere to be seen. Dalo had a stinker today. I tell you what, I've been praising Dalo throughout the summer. But here, he's throwing that all out the bin. Start Juan Bissaka next game because I tell you what, Dalo needs to learn. He needs to improve still. I thought he could be the starting right back for this club, but apparently not. Apparently, we still need to sign Denzel Dumfries, and well, it's not looking good for Dallo either. Luke Shaw too. Why is Luke Shaw starting? Luke Shaw, in my opinion, didn't have a good preseason. You know who did have a good preseason though? Tyrell Malassia. 
And where was he? He came on the 89th minute. He got about what, five minutes of game time in that game. I mean, that's really pathetic. Luke Shaw is a really bad player. I mean, he's sure he had that good year in 2021, but that's about it, really. He only played good for half the year in that time as well. Other than that, though, he's been a shambles of a player for United. Malassia needs to start every game now because I tell you what, that young blood into that left back spot. He can definitely be our new left back and well. That's why he does need to start. Luke Shaw, I want to see him gone from the first team for a very long time, if not forever. He should maybe just be a backup left back if he's lucky now and well. That's why I do think that he should not be starting anymore. But there was still a one or two decent players in that one. Lissandro Martinez, I actually have to say, fair play to Martinez. I thought he was decent enough in that one. He looked pr pretty good defensively, especially in around the start of the game too. I thought Martinez was playing good enough, I guess. And well, I think he um, uh, he wasn't getting helped out by his defence really. I mean, I've named Shaw, Dallow and Maguire in that list of players who played bad. And well, they're all in the defence of Martinez. I feel bad for him. He needs Varane in that defence. He needs Malassi. He needs Juan Bissaka. He needs players that can actually help him in that defence and help him keep clean sheets. It's just, I'm not too sure at the moment. I mean, the club is an absolute shambles. It looks like the players haven't brought anything in. I mean, I, if, to be honest, I wouldn't blame Ronaldo if he left right here. I wouldn't blame him if he just um, ripped his contract up when he did go home. Because I tell you what, being a part of this side in the Europa League, probably not even getting Champions League for next year, possibly even dropping into the Conference League by if things keep on going this way. I know it's only the first game of the season, but still, it looks like all that stuff in pre-season has gone out the bin and we're finally back on a clean slate. And it's not a clean, well, it's actually not a clean slate because I tell you what, we're back to the days of Solskjaer, Mourinho, Van Gaal, David Moyes. We're back to these days uh, from this game at least. I'm hoping for a big improvement against Brentford because I tell you what, we need to trust the process still. Per Ten Hag, because he hasn't got his players that he's needed. I mean, for this game, he expected to have Darwin Nunez up top. He expected to have Anthony in the wing. He expected to have uh, De Jong in midfield. Denzel Dumfries at right back. Timber in centre back. Uh, and well, he's got Eriksen. He's got Malasia. There are the two players out of the seven players he listed down in, at the start of the summer that he got. He got Martinez as well, but that was a backup to Timber. So he didn't even get Timber. I mean, he's got two players out of the seven and one backup to one of the players. I mean, Glazer, Avram Glazer was at that game. I'm happy he was at that game because uh, he can now see what a shamble, what a shamble of a club this is. Because I tell you what, he needs to start buying players. I mean, I in the middle of that game, I think it was half time. I checked my phone and I saw a report that United were making bids for Marco Arnautovic. Marco Arnautovic. I mean, this is I'm talking about this player who's left West Ham for China only a few years ago, and now we're trying to put bids in for him as a squad player. You know, some people will say it could work out, but we need to be looking at better, younger strikers. Benjamin Sesko, for example, he would be a good young striker, but not Marco Arnautovic, who's playing for Bologna out in Italy at the moment. I mean, if, he, this, if this happens, I may as well just not watch any games anymore, because... This club is no longer serious. We really need a big revamp for the next game. Because I tell you what, Ten Hag really needs to punish a few of these players because they are not really proven that they've learned anything over the past month and over the past six weeks, really. All that stuff in pre-season, out, out the window. And, well, I'm pretty sure Ten Hag will be fuming. Of course, no blame does go to Ten Hag, of course, for this one. I'm being pretty sure he's probably very frustrated with how the team played. Didn't even give him one minute of press in that one or anything like that. I mean, that really is dreadful. Some of these players need to learn discipline. They need to learn how to listen to the manager. And well, I tell you what, Den Haag will be hoping for a turnaround against Brentford. And let's hope that United can get the win next week. And that will end this uh, Manchester United match re re review. I hope you did enjoy it. Remember to like, share and subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you all for the support of the channel. Once again, I really do appreciate it. And see you all once again in KTFG very, very soon.